Hi guys, Sean here from DigiDirect. Now today, we're gonna to be talking about the new Fujifilm GFX 50S. Now this is a 50 megapixel mirrorless uh, medium format camera. Now by medium format, that means that it has even a larger sensor than a full frame camera, and we'll see that that's much of what makes this camera stand out. Now I'll say up front that this is not a cheap camera. Your average consumer is not gonna be picking one up, certainly. But by the, in, in terms of medium format, it is a relatively inexpensive medium format camera. Now also when we delve into it, we'll see that in terms of its controls and handling and so on, the GFX 50S is very similar to the X-T2. It's almost like a jacked up X-T2, which is a good thing. But enough about that, let's start by taking a look at the body first. So the GFX 50S is not a small bodied camera necessarily. It's bigger than an X-T2 and so on, but it's not huge. It's about the same size as a full frame DSLR or so, which makes it a good size in terms of medium format cameras. It's definitely portable. All the photos that you see in this uh, video, I took uh, handheld, so that's good. Now, let's take a look at the size of that sensor. And as I mentioned, that's really what this camera is all about. We'll see that, ca that the camera does not necessarily have the craziest specs, but this sensor is what makes it shine. Now, that size difference is really a lot more evident when we compare it to, for example, a full-frame camera, like the, one of the Sony A7s here, for example, or even compare it directly to an APS-C size sensor, like what's on the Fujifilm X-T2. Now we'll touch on that sensor a little bit more briefly, um, but speaking of the X-T2, as I mentioned, the body and controls are very similar to the X-T2. At the top here, we see the same ISO and uh, shutter speed dials that we see on cameras like the X-T2 or the X-Pro2 or similar. The lenses on the GFX 50S also all have, uh, at least the ones out so far, all have these manual aperture control rings, which means that you can manually control this camera completely between these rings on the, the lenses and on the body, which is really nice to have. We've got a tilting LCD screen here on the back that has that same somewhat unique uh, side tilting mechanism that we saw on the X-T2. They've also included the joystick that was on the X-T2 and X-Pro2. I'm really happy to see that on here because I really love that joystick. It makes it really quick and easy to navigate the menus and move your autofocus points. Just a, a really good way to you know, speed up your operation of the camera in general. I'm really glad to see that here on this camera. Speaking of menus, it does have that same menu system that we're used to seeing on Fuji cameras, uh, which is a pretty well laid out system. It's fairly easy to grasp. It also does have the same X Processor Pro inside of it that the X-T2 has. Across the body here, we have a number of intelligently laid out buttons uh, from you know, quick menus, exposure compensation, and so on. At the top, we have a nice large electronic viewfinder. This is a fairly high quality viewfinder. I quite like it. It actually is removable, which is interesting. So you can take it off if you want to make the body a little bit more compact. As a side note, you can buy this uh, optional accessory, which is kind of a little swivel mount, which allows you to swivel the, uh, the viewfinder both horizontally and vertically. Also on the top here on the right-hand side, we have this nice backlit LCD screen, which shows you know, all of our more important settings. Uh, some people use these screens, some people don't. I, I prefer them. Uh, I find that I, I'm looking at the back of the, of the camera a lot less often when I have these screens, so it's certainly nice to have in there. We've got a good variety of ports across the body. On the side here, we've got USB 3, HDMI, remote input, a power input, uh, and a 3.5 mil mic and headphone port as well. On the other side, we've got dual SD card slots, and on the side here, not on the bottom, we've got the battery input. And we can see it's a fairly large battery. It has a pretty good life on it. I was pretty happy with the, uh, the, the battery level and how long it lasted when I was shooting with it. Uh, officially, it's rated for about 400 shots. Also, the entire camera body and all of the lenses that have been released so far are fully weather sealed. So this will be a fully weather sealed system. Taking a quick look at those lenses, these are a new lens mount system, the GF mount. So you're not going to be using the lenses from your X-T2, for example, on the, the GFX 50S here. Uh, they've announced six lenses so far, three of which are currently out. There's the 63mm f2.8, 32-64mm to f4, and 120mm f4 macro. Now in terms of full frame equivalent focal length, these are going to be a 50mm, 24-50mm, to and 95mm equivalent. They've also announced but not yet released a 23mm, 45mm, and 110mm lenses. So for anyone who has operated a Fujifilm camera in the past, this is gonna be an easy jump. You don't need to be intimidated by the fact that it's medium format. It operates much the same as any other Fujifilm camera. And even if you haven't used Fujifilm cameras before, they're pretty easy to use, and this is too. So now let's touch on the biggest strength of the Fujifilm GFX 50S, and that is, of course, the huge 51.4 megapixel medium format sensor. Now to clarify something, when I say medium format, that means larger than full frame, but it doesn't necessarily indicate an exact size. So the sensor here on the 50S is uh, 44 mil by 33 millimeters, which is certainly larger than full frame, although no, it's not exactly as big as the sensor on the Phase 1 XF medium format camera, 
which is 54 millimeter by 40 millimeter. So not all medium format cameras have the exact same sensor size. Now, regardless though, that larger than full frame sensor and the high 51.4 megapixels resolution on that sensor means that the photos coming out of this camera are going to be amazing. So looking at the image quality, the detail, sharpness and resolution of these photos, they're all crazy, crazy high. Uh, you, you notice that as soon as you take your first photo or two with the camera, it's really, really quite impressive. I was, I was really quite staggered with the, the photos that, you know, just even casual street shots with just the detail and richness coming out of the camera are really, really good. And it's definitely the biggest strength of this camera, which is great because that's why people gravitate towards medium format cameras. They want that, that, you know, that crisp detail, the high resolution, the ability to blow these photos up and crop in quite a bit as they need. Uh, that definitely is really, really well done on the Fujifilm GFX 50S. So a great job uh, in terms of overall image quality, detail, sharpness, resolution, all that kind of great stuff is really done very, very well. Even a little extra bonus there as well is that you can shoot all these great quality images also using Fuji's popular film simulations, so like Provia, Velvia, and so on, these kind of color profiles that are really, really popular, modeled after you know, some of Fuji's older uh, actual film that they created back in the day. Uh, so you can get those high quality images with these beautiful color profiles as well. So amazing, super high marks uh, for image quality coming out of the Fujifilm GFX 50S. They definitely hit it right out of the park there, which is what you want in a camera like this. So looking at the autofocus on the GFX 50S, it's serviceable, it's not amazing. It's not nearly as good as the system, for example, that was on the X-T2, which was very fast and snappy. You know, make no bones about it, this is not a sports camera. But that being said, most people will be using medium format cameras for stuff like, you know, portraits, uh, studio work in general, uh, landscapes, architectural photography. For any of those scenarios, the autofocus system is perfectly adequate, totally fine. I don't think anyone's going to have any issues with it. Certainly there were a couple times when I wish it would autofocus a little bit faster than it did, um, but I really think that it'll be absolutely fine for most people's needs. Now, similarly, looking at burst shooting, it can shoot three frames per second, which is okay, but it's certainly nothing to write home about. You know, it ties back into like the autofocus. It's, it's just not a sports and action camera, which for most people, how they're gonna shoot with medium format is probably not gonna be a concern for your average person using this camera. So I, I think that's fine. Three frames per second is all right. Uh, if you need a little bit faster than, you know, just single shooting. In terms of video, the GFX 50S can shoot at 1080p at up to 30 frames per second. So it's not 4K, but it is quite detailed 1080p. It does look quite nice. And you can shoot it in all, again, all of those different film, film simulations, uh, Provia, Velvia, and so on, monochrome that Fuji is known for. So that's nice to have. So it does have some, some decent video functionality. Again, not something that most people are gonna be buying this camera for, but it does have it. So we can see that purely in terms of specs, the Fujifilm GFX is not necessarily gonna blow away the other cameras on the market, but that's not really the point. The point is to utilize that huge medium format sensor to take amazingly high quality images that have a ton of detail, uh, resolution, and sharpness. And it does this, uh, again, in spades, as I touched on before. It does this really, really, really well, which is kind of the point of the camera. I think in the hands of you know, a commercial, uh, real estate, landscape, portrait photographer, anything like that, uh, this is gonna be a way to take stunning medium format photography in a body that is A, fairly small and compact, B, uh, has great manual controls on it, taken from you know, the well-designed X-T2 and similar cameras, and C, is at a fairly affordable price point uh, for medium format. I think this is gonna allow a lot of people who maybe haven't dabbled in medium format before to have a relatively affordable way to get into it and take amazing photographs. If you'd like to test out the GFX 50S, you know, see what kind of photos you can get out of it, come on down to one of our stores. We have them on display. We've got stores in the Sydney CBD, Bondi Junction, Miranda, Chatswood, the Brisbane and Melbourne CBD, and a store in Cannington, Western Australia, which is just outside of Perth. You can also order the GFX 50S on our website at www.digidirect.com.au. Thanks, guys. Take care.